Hello, my name is Bruce Sawalski. I'm author of Canadian Wilderness Survival, Chief Instructor of the Boreal Wilderness Institute, and for the last 25 years, I have been a full-time wilderness survival instructor. And what I want to talk about is a little aspect of fire lighting. And the aspect of fire lighting is what I call the cell of fire lighting. And it's just a model to put this together. And the uh, reason I thought about this was last week at the Outdoor Adventure Summit, I had the privilege of listening to Paul Kirtley. Paul is one of the UK's best and most innovative bushcraft and survival instructors. Also a good outdoor guide and many, many in terms of a, an all-round outdoor educator. But I listened to him talk about the science of fire lighting. And of course, the science of fire lighting is something I teach and talk about all the time and to understand it. And as I was listening to him, I started to think about the cell of fire lighting. Is there an aspect that we sometimes miss? I know that most professional instructors will jab on immediately to the first part of cell, which is the, the first S, which is science. So where is the science of fire lighting? Well, here is a classic example. This is a very small translucent or tissue paper like piece of birch bark that I pulled off a local tree literally on my way here to my classroom uh, this afternoon and when I did it I pulled this off for a very very important reason this birch bark has some science behind it I'll also talk about it at the end because there's another aspect that we have to understand so what's the science well here where it's translucent and nearly white that tissue paper will burn much more furiously and way more chance of going off than when it's orange like you see along there. So the orange park just doesn't work as well. In other words, the actual function of that, uh, of that orange means that the birch bark is just a little micro bit thicker there and it just doesn't work as well. So there's science behind this piece. There's also science here. That is a strike anywhere match. This is a split paper match and you can tell it's split because I can flip and show you the other side. Now what's the difference between this? This has three or four times the mass than this. So when I light this match I have only a few seconds to get my fire to go. When I light this match assuming conditions are perfect or at least reasonable I will get 20 seconds of steady flame. So there's science behind these two tools and which tool will I pick and what I have. Now, there's also the next S and this goes right into that second S and that is skill. So I need less skill to light this match. I need more skill to light that match because I don't get the 20 seconds of steady flame. It's impossible to get that. So I need to take this and light some other object right? Whether that being a tinder, whether that being a twig bundle, whether that's being a fire stick, it does not matter as long as I prepared with my skill and the science of understanding to be able to do that. So that makes a big difference. So the first S is science. I have to understand that. There is dozens of things that we talk about that individual pieces of the science. Things like the, um, the rule of twos, things like the fire triangle. We have to understand that. We have to figure that out. We have to be able to understand in terms of science, the difference between different types of trees, between mass and bark, between dry wood and seasoned wood and wet wood and green wood. That's all science. There's also the skills involved in picking that, those things and practicing with them. So how much more practice does it take to light a fire with one of these uh, magnesium uh, rods or with a, a ferocium rod with some magnesium um, tinder on the bottom? Now here, of course, I have used some a quick skill in the fact that I actually put on a hacksaw blade and I duct taped it on so it would actually be there for me and that I wouldn't have to worry about it. But these are a poor striker. So given an option between a professional high-end striker and a poor striker, that's going to mean a difference. Now, that's skill, but that also goes into the third part of cell, which is equipment. This is simply a better striker than this. 
this striker here is a pile of junk. But what did I do? I took the original striker piece that they gave me for my five dollars at uh, literally a corner store. Threw that in the junk gar in the garbage. Fortunately, I didn't throw that one away, so I could still show you. But most of them I did, and I replaced it with a high quality one from an old Swedish fire steel, because eventually the strikers will eventually break and wear out. Oh, because if you, if you run them a thousand times, they can't last forever. They're not, they, you know, they're, you're ripping off a little teeny bit of the metal every time you use it. So here, I used a little bit of skill and forethought and science to improve this piece of equipment, which isn't very good. If I stay with a high quality one, then I'm fine because this is a high quality striker. And if I have the proper equipment, and what's the proper equipment? Well, a lighter, which I use all the time because I know it's always going to fail. What do I back it up with? Strike Anywhere matches. Where are those Strike Anywhere matches? They're in a, in a properly waterproof container around my neck ready to go, but I like to save them, which means I like to use my striker anytime I can because it's worth using. It's a good tool. And what do I back that up with? In my case, a little bit of tinder, some extra, uh, maybe a set of, um, of candles, some extra gear, some fire lighting tools and stuff to make sure I have it. And that's equipment. So what's the sell of fire lighting? Science, skill, equipment. And then we get to an interesting thing. What's the last one? What's that last one in sell? Well, it's something that I don't think a lot of people concentrate on because we want to get rid of it normally. We want to make sure that that doesn't exist, but it's there, and that is luck. So let's go back to this piece of birch bark. This piece of birch bark, if I wanted to light a fire with it using my striker, because it's tissue paper, I would shred it to as many, many, many small pieces as I can. I would shred it, I would then put it in my hand, and I'd rub it and I'd rub it to dry it. Why am I trying to do that? Because to ignite something, it has to be dry, raised to 260 degrees C, and then it'll spontaneously combust. So where does luck come in then? Well, when I shred this, assuming I have enough skill to shred in lots and lots of little pieces, the only thing that will really strike on this from a spark is if a spark hits the edge. So if I have a thousand pieces, I have a thousand edges. If I have seven pieces, I only have seven edges. Now, Paul Kirtley, when he was doing his demo, showed a really beautiful video, really good video. He had a nice, beautiful piece of birch bark that he laid down perfectly flat, and then he scraped it with his knife to shred the inside of the birch bark. And he did two things. He made as many pieces as he could. And literally, the more pieces you make, the better off you are. And then he shredded up the actual board itself for the piece of birch bark, which is what it really is. And he did that to guarantee that when one lit, the next one would go. Well, when you shred that way with a knife, it always works better than this. This is much harder. Well, what's the problem? Well, we don't always get trees that look like Paul's piece of birch bark. Sometimes all we get is really small trees and this would be considered a massive piece of tissue paper. And matter of fact, it is, it's beautiful. So what happens with this is there's some luck and that luck is that the, the actual spark has to hit that edge or it won't go off. And you can build your luck with what? Science, skill, and equipment. So if you understand the science of fire lighting, you have lots of skill, i.e. practice, and you have the right equipment to do the job, then you don't need very much luck. If it's 25 above Celsius, and there's no wind, you also don't need as much luck. If it's 45 below and it's a snowstorm, you might need a lot of luck, especially if your tissue paper birch bark doesn't look like this. So luck, in my opinion, is that thing. And I've seen people set themselves up perfectly and take 12 strikes with the striker. I've seen another person walk up, hit it with one strike, and it goes up perfectly. 
What I'd really like to see someday is if people published all the bloopers. In other words, if everyone does their demos and all I want to see is a reel of bloopers, not the perfect one I use where I get one strike and it always goes off. Because, I mean, it's wonderful. And some days you have that kind of luck. And some days you don't. And I've seen students who did everything right and then just had a little bit of bad luck. And I've also seen students that didn't do much right and had a lot of luck. And that happens in life, right? And that's, you take a look at this virus wandering around. There's got to be a little bit of luck if the droplet just happens to hit you and not the person beside you, right? There's luck in life. That's how it works. This is science. This is good equipment. But to make this tissue paper birch bark go properly, I may need a little bit of luck as well. And again, we can work out and remove a bit of that luck, but it's always still there. So what's the cell of fire lighting? Science, skill, equipment, and luck. Learn the science, practice and practice and practice to get that skill. Carry the right equipment all the time and don't take chances. In the boreal forest of the mountains of Canada, that means three means to light fire. A lighter, good matches in a waterproof container and a real high quality striker that's worth carrying backed up with other kind of fire lighting aids you need and then understand that some days you may need a little bit of luck as well so i hope you, uh, you enjoyed this um uh short video on the cell of fire lighting you won't see many videos out from me because these days i am uh closed the boreal wilderness institute until um at least september the 5th and i am work back at work for the, her majesty's canadian army and um doing a sergeant major's job instead of teaching but i think in this type of crisis and time of um uh, a, a pandemic that kind of thing is what we all have to do and i hope you all stay safe and enjoy the summer and i really do hope you get a chance to go out into the canadian wilderness or the wilderness of your home and around and just remember in this type of in time of pandemic yeah you want a little bit of luck but you can build your own luck as well just like we can in fire lighting with science and skill thank you very much